chapter 5. <clears throat> and um, we're going to look at verse 38 through 42. <clears throat> You have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say unto you, so this is law says, get them back. Can I say it any more? Get them back. Pay them back. Revenge. But I say unto you, now he's coming, he is not coming from a law point of view. Uh, in the law, it was this way, and this is what you should do is get back at them. But in the, in the New Testament law, it is don't get back at them. It's not a contrast, it's not a change up of whatever. It is now coming from a spirit, a nature that Went, that was the most powerful uh, nature in the world, <clears throat> God himself. And uh, enemies down here on the earth, his enemies, and, um, and instead of coming down and just destroying them, instead of using any power it, that we would call power, he used a power, but it's, it's foolishness to him. And by... The cross made foolish the wisdom of this world, um, came down and became a man, and then that wasn't good enough, that wasn't low enough. He, he became as a servant, where in, in this world, in this culture, you do that and you get no respect. You have, they say you have to earn respect. Um, but you get no respect because now, well, you're just a servant. Well, what if that's God? Well, still, you're a servant. So, And then he be, became looked upon as if he was a um, lawbreaker and violator of God's precepts and was hung on the cross for it. And in that cross and in that weakness, defeated all enemies. Through death he destroyed him that hath the power of death, that is the devil. The old man was crucified. Know ye not that the old man is crucified? Uh, on and on and on. Sin, sins dealt with. All, every, th every obstacle was defeated, not by using great power, not by getting back at anybody, but by laying down his life and taking what they, they deserved. Taking what they deserved. Now, in principle, like in a class like this, oh, yeah. hallelujah, hallelujah. But wait till somebody, <laughs> you know, wait till somebody does something to you and then see if it's a teaching or the lamb within you, formed in you, the nature of Christ formed in you. See if it's a, See if it's a, a, a doctrine that, well, that we adhere to at New Creation Fellowship and we believe this and we teach it regularly, or is it a nature, is it the New Covenant way of proceeding? You know, and, and we all have to face that. I mean, we do. We all have to face that. Is, is what we're learning and if and if you want i mean this is the same scripture whether it's in a in a baptist church or a methodist church or catholic or the scriptures we just read read the same <laughs> this isn't specifically a new creation fellowship teaching this is called a, a jesus teaching see the red letters and you may see <laughs> this is him but this is him here, the Lamb of God. This is, he knows, see, he, he's, he's going to be facing, after this happens, then all this stuff starts getting stirred up. You know, this is the very beginning, the early part of his ministry and everything. But after, the, after this, 
the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the chief priests and everybody starts going at him and going after him and trying to trip him up. And he's the son of God. And, you know, there are places where they say, well, you know, uh, well, you know, where do you get your authority? I'm just trying to think of one off the top of my head. Where do you get your authority? You know, and Jesus says, um, well, I'll answer you if you'll answer my question. Okay, well, what is it? Well, John the Baptist is his ministry of heaven or of man? And so it goes, you know, and then they say, well, if they say of heaven, then, you know, but if they say of man, and, you know, so we go, oh, wow. Oh, Jesus is, yeah, he's so good, you know. Folks, he knows that the answer is the cross. <laughs> you know, he's not going, well, that felt good or whatever. He just knows that they don't know what they're talking about. They don't see things from, from God's perspective. And so... They've got a religious point of view about everything, and you know. But he he knows that sword fighting, you know, is not the answer, and will accomplish absolutely nothing. And in some cases, maybe stir them up more. Okay. Well, he doesn't care. You know what I mean? I mean, he doesn't care. I mean, he's gonna die anyway. He came to die on the cross. That's his plan. He came to give himself, and we always, you know, we always go, yeah, he came to give himself for us as if there's something, you know. He came to give himself for these, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to put it this way just to try to help you understand. These creeps that were the high priest and the, and the da 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 the, you know, I'm trying to show you that they were, you know, this wasn't just some little deal here. They were, they were seeking to kill him and to accuse him and to make him look bad. Uh, and, and folks, people do that stuff. People do. They try to make you look bad. They try to accuse you of stuff you didn't do and all this kind of stuff. Well, you know, the, the, the real deal in that is not, Lord, let me live in such a way that they'll never find anything to accuse me over because Jesus was perfect. <laughs> okay? So come on. They'll find something. You know, besides... The goal isn't that you don't ever get accused or anything. The goal is that you let this life and nature come out of you in that. And I'll tell you right now, like in the book of Revelation, when it talks about they that overcome, that's what it's talking about. You know, that's what it's talking about. It is talking about you overcame. Well, there you go. Chapter 12, they overcame by his death and blood poured out and beat and wrongly treated. The word of their testimony, the word testimony is martyr, the word of, the, the, what, of martyrdom, and they love not their life. This is how they overcome. If you love not your life unto the death, guess what? There you have. You just overcame by the lamb. See? But we want to yeah, they that overcame, they, it doesn't say what they did, but I bet they punched the enemy in the mouth. I'm going to give the devil a black eye. You know, do you think Jesus gave the devil a black, a black eye? <laughs> the bad thing is he didn't even crucify the devil. He was crucified. <laughs> right? All right, so don't resist evil because it gives power equal and opposite force to the forces of evil. It's the, that principle of physics. If you shove something, it'll shove back with equal but opposite force. And you're actually just giving, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm going to just tell you a little key to how I have survived stuff. I've survived it, number one, by the nature of the lamb and not Randy. I was raised in Oak Cliff, and I learned how to push back. And some of you go, oh, it can't be that bad, but I'm just telling you, I was raised in Oak Cliff. That in itself, I'll tell you, if you know anything about the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, 
So for the lamb to come out of me is the lamb. It's not a fake thing, I'm telling you. But one of the keys in the process is when they start pushing, <clears throat> pushing, and accusing and whatever, I don't push back. Okay, now there's different ways of pushing back. One is somebody, you know, you stand there at a place and they push you like this, you push back. Well, you know where that's gonna go anyway, don't you? You know. Uh, but I'm not just talking about that. I don't push back with self-justification because that's pushing back. Did you know that? I'm thinking, I want you to think about it if you, if you don't know that. Self-justification is a form of pushing back. And I don't push back. I don't get into that. And I just, you know, the best thing to do is, you know, uh, if, if someone's dead and you don't like them, you may walk up and kick them and then go, yeah. But after a while, you kind of go, well, this is stupid. He's dead. <laughs> And it's better to be dead with Christ so that he can come forth and that, that sweet fragrance of Christ. And you know, that sweet fragrance that, that it talks about in the New Testament, well, that's always in the Old Testament where that came from, the shadow, and this is the real, was from something that was thrown up on an altar and set on fire by God. And, you know, and then there, and God says, this is a sweet savor. Selfless giving, not just in itself, not sacrificial in itself, that is, comes from Christ in you, the hope of glory. It comes from him, not from you. And so, you know, I, I do understand all the feelings and the reactions that can come. The other thing is, I don't let anything slip out of my mouth. I don't go talk to somebody about it. You know, the first thing you wanna do is get somebody on your side. <laughs> you do, you, that's the first, you go, you know, and I'm just, you know, and we, we sound pitiful and all this kind of stuff. You know, just be with the Lord. Just be with the Lord. Don't, you, you're not even supposed to have a side. I mean, that's right. You're not, what, God would say, what are you doing in this? You're not supposed to be in the middle of this. This, this is supposed to be between me and them. But you're making it between you and them. You, if you have a side, there's gonna be problems and you're just asking for it. You're just asking for it. So, okay, go ahead. But, and I'm talking about personal attacks. And as a shepherd, I'm a little different in that it's my responsibility to protect the sheep. That may mean I take stripes, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but, there's a different walk. And it doesn't void out the lamb. It's just not self-justification or self-protection. It's somebody else is covering you so you don't have to, so you can respond by the lamb. Does that make sense to anybody? Yes. It's, a, it's different. And it's, it's that Godhead thing. If, if the Lord is working in you, then you can function in that manner, but instead of punching them out, you step in the place of them, and then you may take the stripes, but it allows them, especially if they're, they're just learning or growing, it allows them to, to be able to release him easier and grow. Anyway, <clears throat> excuse me while I drink this alcoholic beverage. I'm teasing, I'm teasing. <laughs> And I wonder why people, you know, yeah, I asked for it. <clears throat> All right. What is truly weak in the Lord by lamb nature will not react. What is truly weak in the Lord by the lamb nature will not react, but, uh, and what is weak of character in the earth will use its own other strengths to get revenge, be the lamb. It will. You, you, you know, when you're down and out or whatever, everything says unfair, everything says injustice, everything says this and that. Okay, okay, you can make it a situation of the law and justice or injustice. 
You can make it a situation of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and say, well, this is good and this is evil. Or you can make it a situation of him. My relationship is with him, the Lamb of God. My heart is with him, the Lamb of God. I love him. I will not be moved from him. And everything's pulling and, you know, and you, you know, there are reactions and things and, and thoughts and all this kind of stuff, you know, well, they shouldn't because, well, they're just as bad as me or, you know, whatever, I can, you know, I've probably thought them all. <laughs> and and um, in fact, they're worse than me or whatever then you've made it a thing of law. Then it's who is best under the law. But with Jesus, he'll, he'll take care of you. Any loss that comes by his spirit and nature, he's going to take care of you. And I, I can't tell you every avenue, and you know, I, I, I can't say that if somebody burned your house down because their neighbor hated you, that God would give you a tax-free house, da, da 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 But I will tell you that there are greater things, and I've, you know, I'm still learning this, but I've found that there are greater things than things. <laughs> and that is peace with the Lord and peace in your heart that you don't have to react. Peace is a huge, it's huge. And, and to know that you are genuinely with the Lord regardless of what happens or what anyone says, that you know that, then it doesn't matter what other people think when you're really there. <laughs> That's right, because it only, you know, we've all been where we're not there. And what we're talking about here is, this is where we're, this is what we're shooting for. This is the new covenant relationship that he's spelling out here. That's what he's spelling out. And remember now, what a, what a contrast between this is about law and grace. Okay, law and grace. Law says, you know, if, if uh, someone, uh, you know, if they take, knock out your tooth, then you can, uh, an eye for an eye and tooth for tooth. I can take out his. Okay. But grace says, I can hit him back, knock out five teeth, and then be under grace and God will forgive me. I mean, that's the way some people put it. This is not what I'm teaching now. I'm, I'm trying to point out <laughs> that that's why, we're, <laughs> that's why we're emphasizing this law and lamb thing and not law and grace. We're, we're making the point that grace doesn't cover everything. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, do away with Christ in us. And it never should. It never should. But we, we let the devil do away with it, and then we come along and let grace do away with him. Say, well, you know, I'll sin and get forgiveness later. I've, I've, I've been in counseling with people and had them tell me that. Well, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to sin and, and get it, you know, I'll get grace later. <laughs> Some of you are going, yeah, that was me. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> um... They will war against him, which may be us, but it's him. The war is not against us, first and foremost. They will war against us with weapons, but we, with the power of the Lamb, will also war. But it's a different kind of warfare. <clears throat> uh, in fact, I'm taking this from places like Jeremiah and Isaiah and stuff. Uh, what I'm about to read. Um, so, but we will, we will war with the power of the Lamb. This is what war with the enemy looks like, and this is what treading down the enemy at the cross looks like. At the cross, Jesus tread down his enemies. Amen? But he died, not them. But at the cross... He took care of the enemy. He took care of sin. He took care of all the things that were contrary 
to the heart of God and to the plan of God for us. So this is what war with the enemy looks like. Uh, and this is what treading down the enemy looks like. This is his victory. These enemies shall be drowned, drowned in the river Jordan, baptized into his death. This is, this is Old Testament stuff, but see, it still shows the heart of God. Woe unto them, woe unto the Egyptians. They shall come against you, but they shall be drowned in the, in the rivers and, you know, da-da-da-da. And we're going, yeah, get them. And yet, Jesus dies and then leads captivity captive. Jesus dies and leads, then leads captivity captive. And he takes them from being these warrior spirits that were in bondage to that nature, and he brings them into captivity to his own nature. Now, you search that out in Ephesians, and you see if that's really not what's going on there. It is, it is this victory that, that uh, if, if the blood, I don't even know if I've got that, mentioned here but you know and and blood shall be shed and da, 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 da. and that's Jesus in the Old Testament it's them but the Old Testament is also declaring Christ Jesus said search the scriptures and at that time the only scriptures were the Old Testament search them for they testify of me so the blood that's going to be splattered and smeared and spread is going to be his for them it's powerful it's powerful. <clears throat> I like this one of the, these enemies shall be drowned, drowned in the river Jordan. Yes, baptized into his death. <laughs> because many an enemy went down into that and came up friend of God. Went down into those waters and as it were, were drowned. Because, you know, water baptism, this is your death, this is him coming up as your resurrection. <clears throat> uh, I have skipped this part here, but it's still dealing with this captivity captive. Should I pursue this a little more? This, was, this is the part I left out in uh, Ireland when I was doing the women's meeting. And we were talking about Barak. <clears throat> um, because he's, he's mentioned in the New Testament and Deborah's not. Barak, he went in God's weakness, but stood in God's power that makes the strong weak and the weak strong. And that was why Barak's mentioned in Hebrews 11 in the faith chapter, because this particular group, and we went through three groups in Hebrews 11 at the end to show the different ways that you can approach this spirit. You can approach this lamb spirit in your weakness so that he becomes your strength, you can approach this lamb spirit in that you stay down, and I'm just quoting Hebrews 11 there, that you stay down in death longer so that you have a better resurrection, which is the exact words it uses there. And then finally the last category is that you stay in death, and the end result of that, the scripture declares, is that they without us, that, that, that this will... This will benefit those who are beyond us, beyond our life now. <clears throat> so, um, um, Barak went into God's weakness but stood in God's power that makes the strong weak and the weak strong. The warrior that's against Jesus is made a captive of love, struck down by the sword of the word of his cross that Jesus died and was defeated so that they might be captivated by this spirit. As warriors, we were imprisoned with iron and now bound by love, not to fight and defeat, but to die with him. Naaman went, in, what, Naaman went from captive to captive. You, you remember Naaman. And he was, he was baptized in the Jordan. He went from captive and he, he left there after that and he said, you know, I, from now on I'm going to be serving the living God. He'd become a captive of God and of this nature and of this love. 
<clears throat> uh, Naaman went from captain to captive. Death is the answer, and God has his grave digger standing close by. <laughs> Meaning, if you're ready, he's ready. If you'll be ready, if you'll gird yourself with his spirit, then you can go into death. But here's the wonderful thing about this, and we're not talking about physical death. We're, the wonderful thing about it is, is that out of this kind of death or weakness, like Barak, there's resurrection. There's always resurrection because there is life out of this death, but not any other kind. So it has to be union with him into death, okay? <clears throat> All right, uh, Matthew 5, um, 43. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. <clears throat> um, well, I don't know why I don't... Oh, I have, uh, I have the next verse later. Uh, I went at this point to John 13, 34, and, and, um, and I've also went to 15, 12, and 13. I'm not going to go over that right now. I'm just going to read this since we're running a little bit. The law tells me to love my neighbor, doesn't it? The law says, love your neighbor, the second commandment. The law tells me to love my neighbor. The life of the lamb lives in me in such a way that I lay down my life as Jesus did for my neighbor and others. See, the law's version of love is not agape love. It's not selfless love. It's not greater love. There's a greater love that a man lay down his life. And, and so the law says love your neighbor, but you can never love him with this kind of love because you'll always protect yourself. If you love him at best, second, you'll always love you first. That's just human nature, okay. Um, um, so I'll read this, this one sentence again. The life of the lamb lives in me in such a way that I lay down my life as Jesus did for my neighbor and others. Don't be you. Don't be you. Be, and here's what I wrote, so listen, let it sink in before you judge. Be your neighbor, be your friend, be your spouse, be many people. Don't just be you, but learn to see from many other perspectives. Be the outcast, be the infirm, be the dying, be the one who deserves being hated. Learn to be that so that you can see from people's perspective where they're at and, and you can judge righteous judgment and not just by the appearance of things. And so, so and, and just in counseling over the years, so much of the time the biggest problem I ever see <clears throat> is that the person I'm talking to can only see things from their perspective. They cannot see anything from anyone else's perspective. And, and, and so the solution has to satisfy their perspective. You know, well, that's what you go to counseling for, right? No, I would think we would go for Jesus. You know, even if it offset me, you know, to go for an increase of Christ. <clears throat> and so... That's why I wrote that. Be many people. Learn to see from many different angles and not just your own perspective. Um, and I think Paul kind of meant that in, in the sense that, you know, he's become all things to all people. I think that's mixed in there. <clears throat> um, okay, and then now we're going to do verse 44 through uh, 40, well, to the end of the chapter, I guess. Verse four, Matthew 5, 44, but I say unto you, love your enemies. <laughs> See, <clears throat> the law says love your neighbor. The lamb says love your enemy, but I say unto you. This is the lamb talking, but I say unto you. See, we go, it's Jesus, the master teacher talking here. No, this is Jesus, the lamb of God saying, I'm saying unto you. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, 
and pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them who love you, <clears throat> what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors the same? <clears throat> and if you greet your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the heathen do uh, so? Be ye therefore perfect as your Father who is in heaven is perfect. <clears throat> All right, so let's clear up the perfect part. He's not talking about just, well, look, it's no problem here. Just be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> He's not talking about sinless perfection here. He's talking about the perfection of the Lamb. You can't do that. It's going to take him formed in you. Christ formed in you. Paul said, I this church, Galatia, the churches in Galatia were having all these problems and stuff. And Paul didn't get down on every point and say, okay, well, here's what you should do here. And da, 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 da. He said, I travail in birth till Christ is formed in you. He didn't say, you know, well, just follow Jesus or do, read the word and do what it says. Or He's, he wants this formed in them. See? And, and in the Corinth, when he's talking to the Corinthians, another church, and they're all divided and all this stuff, his, his response is, here's the problem. Is Christ divided? No. You're divided because it's not him in you. And if it's him in you, guess what? You won't be divided the way that you are. <clears throat> um, so the perfect thing isn't sinless perfection. is isn't even talking about that. It is talking about coming to the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ, which is... The, his measure, not our measuring up to that stature. You see the difference? He's the measure of it. We come to the measure of the stature of the fullness that is him. That's different. See, we're, we're going, oh, I, I, he's really way up there. I'm trying. <laughs> well, that's under the law again. If you're born again, you already got this in you. Now he must increase and we must decrease. <clears throat> All right, so um, I put love your enemies. I, I, I wrote down here, <laughs> you are not his type. When we can't love our enemies, we're not his type. Yeah. You know, he would never date us. <laughs> we're, we're so opposite of him in this kind of a spirit in this way um, your preference is to rule rather than be ruled are y'all going yeah that's right <laughs> or <laughs> well I, heard, I saw several heads going yeah that's right sure is but I, I didn't know if it was that attitude or that's that's true that's human or that that's human nature yeah you know i mean <laughs> it's like yeah brother now you're preaching it <laughs> your preference is to rule rather than to be ruled therefore the lamb will never really find root in your soil though you embrace the concept because it, it's possible to go oh yeah 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 that's right and even look at scriptures and go yeah yeah I see that, but I don't embrace that concept because that's going to make me look bad or something. You know, which it does, by the way. <laughs> well, it does. I mean, that, there's no getting around that, you know. <clears throat> um, and then this final sentence of this part. It is not possible for you to wage war without hurting your enemies. If it's not the lamb, it's not possible for you to wage war without hurting your enemies. You don't know how to wage war by the cross and by your death. See, Jesus waged war by his death over all enemies. We don't follow suit with his nature and life and wage war against our enemies by the same death and the same cross and the same lamb working in us. We have to, it's almost like, well, I'm, 
I'm almost dead with Christ. You know, it's like my feet are nailed and my hand, but I got this one hand. I'm <laughs> slapping you. Uh -uh, what's up here? You know. <laughs> you know. We, we keep one nail out so that we can retaliate when somebody goes, yeah, I see you there. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know. We, uh, it is not possible for you to wage war without hurting your enemies. But with Christ it was. With Jesus it was. With the Lamb it was possible for him. Um, I'm just... Was that a go-ahead? Did y'all hear that? <laughs> Was that the trumpet of the Lord? <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's the first trumpet. It's a kind of a, kind of a weak sort of trumpet. <laughs> I always expect them. Okay, that's the first seal. <laughs> All right, we actually got 15 minutes, so I'm going to do this, and it shouldn't take that long. Let's go to chapter 6. And we're going to look at verse 19. <clears throat> 19 through 21. You ready? Matthew 6, 19 through 21. Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Um, let's see, that's it. <clears throat> okay. You all ready for this one? Instead of ragging on the fact that someone stole from you, <laughs> ragging means, eh, they shouldn't have done this. Instead of, what, griping? griping and complaining because someone stole from you, lay up treasures that can't be stolen. Wait, there's more. <laughs> you blame them for stealing, but God blames you for not flowing with his ways, but following and defending the way of the world. And I put the defending the way of the world as justifying anger over loss, but refusing the lamb approach. Wow, let's hope Jesus didn't really mean this, what I'm saying. <laughs> but I mean, it really, he is saying it, and it's actually kind of strong the way that he's saying it. Um, for where your treasure is, your treasure is either on things that can be taken or on things no one can ever take from you. So you see, somehow we can read that and we can go, yes, lay up treasures. And I bet you almost every one of us, at some time or another, when those scriptures have been read, either by you or someone else, you sort of raised your head and looked heavenward and said, yes, I've been laying up my treasures in heaven until somebody stole something that was yours. <laughs> you know. And then it's like, what is this? this uh, here we go. Under the law. This is wrong. This is unjust. They're bad. This, they should never have done this. This is really, you know, wrong. The Lord doesn't like this. He, he likes me. But he doesn't like them because they did something like this. And the Lord's looking at you and going, look, they just stole something from you that was earthly. You have stole from me the lamb that you should have just been following me in this spirit. Amen? I mean, I think that's really what it's saying. I don't think I'm adding that. So I think there's a real deal here. And here's why this class, again, why I keep going at it like this law versus lamb is because the law will always raise its head over, you know, over the theft right in the middle, right nested in the middle of a scripture where Jesus is saying, man, just work towards treasures with me and treasures that are eternal that no one can take just just work on that and we go oh, I'm doing that until something gets stolen and so we're we're but but as long as as long as we read this and nothing's going on we're spiritual 
And as long as um, we're stolen from without any thought of these scriptures, we're spiritual. Because we go, well, they're wrong. They should, this, again, here's, here's the law. We're not spiritual, but we think we're spiritual because we're going, well, they're wrong. They stole. This is wrong. They should never have done that. And no, no conviction, no thing comes to us and says, my God, I, sh I sh shouldn't have been, you know. And maybe the Lord allows stuff like that. Maybe he allows the, the enemy through and to take something. He did with Job. You know, and the end with Job was, you know, you're it. You know, and I abhor myself and sackcloth and repent in sackcloth and ashes. But that contrast is an eternal contrast of law and lamb. It's so far from one another. And the contrast is as far as eternity. And yet we can read scriptures like that and never even perceive that, you know what? In the eyes of these scriptures, I'm the one that's really wrong here. And I'm complaining about something that he said I shouldn't even have in my life. Not things. I'm not talking about things. talking about where our heart is. That's what I'm talking about. Actually, that's not what I'm talking about. That's what he says. Because he, he said that, you know. And so, you know, as, I, as I've been going through these and as we'll continue to go through uh, even different stories and parables that Jesus said, we begin to discover how serious he is about his nature in all of these things. Because one after another, you know, he's showing this is, the thing, this is a thing of the heart, where the heart is. It's where your treasure is. I want your heart. I want you, and, and so we say, we say, okay, we say, uh, Lord, you have my heart. Isn't there a song? Lord, you have my heart. And he's going, shut up. Not going. <laughs> you know, come back when it's true. <laughs> you know, but I mean, we're, 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 you know, we're saying, Lord, you do, you have my heart. And we mean that because we're so sincere. Our sincerity is, just, it's just like honey gooing over the top of the container. But you can, you can be full of sincerity and be sincerely wrong. And so, so we're going, you know, Lord, you have my heart. And then he allows something to be stolen from you. And, you, ah! and see, it's not just, it's not just, um, uh, in this, these verses, he's not just saying uh, respond correctly. He, he is said, yes, there's always the not but thing. There is the not I but Christ. The not I in this is when someone steals from you, doesn't trouble you, doesn't trouble your heart. You're not going to react. You're, here's, here's what, it's not going to be I. Here's I rising up. That's wrong. They're stealing. That's, they're a bad person. And then all of this self-righteousness that is not God-righteousness, but we, we call it, you know, right? right. This, is, this is righteous indignation. No, this is you throwing a fit. You know, let's call it what it is. You know, it's you just throwing a fit over something Jesus told you you shouldn't have put yourself in that position in the first place. You know, and I remember, but but there's the other side that is Christ. That's that should not that should not be us, not me, not that. But the other side is the example when uh, and some of us here paid dearly for that. We were. Down in Mardi Gras, and particularly the musicians, we had, uh, Kelly had a really, really expensive saxophone. Didn't you use, lose a flute at that? Okay, you didn't. Had it with you, smart girl. <clears throat> uh, but my guitar and, all, you know, a bunch of stuff like that. And, and we got to the van, saw the wind was, window was taken out, and realized that they'd got in, and they took everything. And 
I said, let's gather up. Gathered up, held hands, said, Lord, we're not going to allow them to steal from us. We give it to them. We're not going to allow them to steal from us because they'll have to pay the price for that because they're probably still under the law. So we're just, we give it. We give it to them. Let's just bless them. So we all just bless them. Didn't we bless them? You know? And, and, and said, we trust you for whatever instruments that you bring in the future. And we, were, we weren't using those for ourselves. We were using them for the Lord. And I think, I'm pretty sure the Lord's blessed us with some instruments since then. <laughs> really, really blessed us. All right, so i got five minutes. Let's do this last one. This is, uh, I'm jumping. So uh, Matthew 7, verse 1 through 5. And then we be done. Judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you measure, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the, the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull the mote out of thine eye, and behold, the beam is in your own eye? Thou hypocrite. This is still in red here. Yeah. That's... First cast the beam out of thine own eye, then shalt thou see clearly <laughs> to help someone else, to cast the beam out of your brother's eye. All right, <clears throat> so I'll just read what I wrote and then we'll pray. Do we look at, at branches and judge them? I'm just using, we're talking about judging. Do we look at branches and judge them? Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Do we look at branches and judge them? But are there not various sizes of branches? Are there not differences in fruitfulness? I mean, I'm just talking about one apple tree, you know, and all the branches on it. It's all one tree. But see, we don't see one tree. We don't see one life. We don't see one union. We don't see this is all part of the vine. We see individual branches and we judge them based on what we're the measure of the stature of the fullness of us well we are and and we judge them on that so are, are there not various sizes of branches are there not differences in fruitfulness do not the seasons allow one to bud before another yet the younger bud later so that the season may be full meaning meaning because uh, during the season there's a lot of budding going on it's not just <laughs> You know? And so we, we bud and we go, hey, hey, bud, <laughs> where's yours? You know? And we look at the lack instead of realizing that's me. More importantly, we're one with him. This is him. We're judging him. We're judging him. And what is the nature of fruitfulness if it is not that of allowing the vine life to fill us and be seen from us? That's fruitfulness. Fruitfulness is not what we're doing in ministry or whatever. Fruitfulness is allowing the vine life to be seen in us and manifest through us. But we make it not Jesus. We make it ministry or I'm doing this for God. Well, if you're doing it, it's under the law. <clears throat> And who first should experience the fruits of our union if not the other branches, meaning that the other branches get to see it before he comes along and picks the fruit off of it? Shouldn't we rejoice in one another? I mean, in the beauty of what he's doing overall, instead of being so self-focused and therefore individual, because remember the law was an individual thing. This is a corporate thing. Um, last sentence say to the true vine and this is in parenthesis this is what you should say to the true vine say to the true vine for the benefit of the health of the tree of life the fragrance of your buds and blossoms should and shall be experienced by others through me let me say it again say to the true vine for the benefit of the health of the tree of life the fragrance of your buds and your blossoms shall and should be experienced by others through me. 
All right, let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you for your blessed son, and I thank you so much for the Holy Spirit who faithfully speaks to our hearts and not just Randy speaking stuff into the air or to our heads. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are so precious to, to find your joy in just lifting up another, in, in lifting up Jesus, and to doing it invisibly and without honor of men except those that, that are aware of your movements and can spot you a mile away because you're busy lifting up Christ. Thank you, Father, that your, your desire is that Jesus be glorified and that you've allowed the Spirit to, to move and to talk. Let it become eternal. Let it be Spirit and life and not just another class. Father, do it not for our sake but so that we may more and more and more find Jesus' heart and more and more, like that alabaster box, it is nothing to break this and pour it out on you, Jesus, because you are much more than any perfume in this box. You are the sweet fragrance. You are the image of God that we want formed in us. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.